This is Lamore Schaffin here with the Innovation Network, and I'm with Amy Glecklin and Maria Serna. And we're here at the Wharton DC Innovation Summit. So, Amy, what brought you here? I'm very interested in the topic of innovation because uh, I work with a group of CEOs who uh, get together on a regular basis in a CEO peer advisory board. And this topic comes up, and I think that it's something that, that everyone grapples with um, on some level, whether it's something they're, they're thinking about consciously or subconsciously, um, but I think it drives business in general. Okay, wonderful. So, um, I actually I work in healthcare, and so I'm a physician, and uh, I think uh, it's a very uh, current topic, innovations. There are a lot of innovative uh, techniques, there are innovative uh, products, and um, I think it, overall there's a lot of changes in the healthcare system, so I'm actually interested to see what um, is uh, going on currently um, within um, healthcare and in other fields, just to sort of like you know, expand knowledge and, uh, again, uh, kind of meet people and share the ideas and, um, and thoughts and collaboration. Yeah. Wonderful. All great points. All great points. So let's start off with your peer group first. Um, so you said, what is the first, you said that these CEOs come together and they're sharing issues and they have issues around innovation, both personal possibly and, and, and professionally in their co companies. So what would be a core issue that you say they would have, one core issue that they all share? I think what they all share is that nothing ever stays the same. <laughs> If I had to guess, it's more around that what we know is there's no such thing as constant and change is always there. So whether it's disruptive technologies or whether um, it's a competitor that comes in that does it you know, better or differently, I think they all share that, that that happens and it's more about what they do about it and how they react to it. So part of uh, the work that we do, um, uh, basically what I'm, what we uh, have is a CEO peer advisory board they, where they share their problems, they discuss the issues, and they get to solution and get to accountability around it. So I find that these topics come up and, um, you know, they, they have a lot of people who guide them internally um, and, you know, they're not necessarily getting kind of a dispassionate advice like they might with a group of peers. Um, and, and this, as much as I've been, you know, when working with them, it's change is always an issue. Right. So. so how does constant change show up in your profession and what, with what you're doing? Well, I mean, there's uh, constant evolution. There's constant... Uh, I and mean, things are always changing, and especially like you know, right now, currently, there's a lot of changes in healthcare. Um, a lot of uh, kind of, I mean, not just from like, um, uh, I guess, uh, healthcare, like, you know, reforms and so on, but also uh, there are a lot of technological advances. There's a lot of like, you know, new techniques. I think there is also um, a lot of uh, integration of uh, electronic. Uh, you know, opportunities, and so a lot of data kind of integration. So there's a lot of things that are happening within healthcare, and I think that's um, very similar with, with what's happening with other fields as well. But you know, that's actually very I think is important. And so you're a neurosurgeon, correct? I'm a, a head. <laughs> I'm an ENT, a head and neck surgeon. Head neck surgeon. Head neck surgeon. Okay. So in your specific area, how is innovation showing up? How are you taking advantage of it? You personally, how are you taking advantage of it? Okay, so, first of all, equipment, technology, uh, new products. Uh, there is also new technology, like, you know, new uh, procedures. Uh, it bec it's uh, a lot of um, uh, surgical technology, like, you know, equipment makes certain things like, you know, surgery, diagnostic techniques much more, um, uh, I mean, facilitates them, uh, advances them, and also uh, gives you certain um, techniques which were not available before. And uh, so there's definitely like, you know, it's uh, advances in, med in healthcare and medicine in procedures and diagnostic trends and also like, you know, providing patients with the uh, options for treatment and cure. So um, whether it's like, you know, within the treatment of cancer, whether it's new uh, drugs, whether it's new um, instruments, whether it's new diagnostic techniques, all of that is happening pretty much on it you know, all the time. And, uh, so it's standing on top of it, I would think, is one of the difficult things, both for yourself as well as for your CEOs. And also, but I think there's an element in innovation about going beyond your own bounds. Um, and so when you're dealing with your CEOs, how are you helping them see innovation in themselves as well as in their profession? What's interesting about innovation is uh, my CEOs don't always have it individually or don't 
think about it that way. They feel like they have to guide uh, the path. You know, they can, they can, they have, their job is to come up with a vision of some and get to it somehow. Usually it's through teamwork. So I'm also a leadership coach and I do a lot of work in that space, which is around how to maximize your team and how to get, use your team with, you know, all, all of it, the, all the things that they bring, you know, in terms of their backgrounds, their, their, um, um, there are areas of expertise that can be combined so that the CEO can really guide, you know, the vision and moving the path and really paint the path forward. So I think that CEOs, I mean, I think if a CEO felt like they had to have the whole package and had to have the answer, the vision of what's going to happen and, and how to innovate, I think if they, try, if they put too much pressure on themselves to have that, I think that's probably a mistake that um, it really is a team effort at the end of the day. And I, and I think it depends what their goals are, right? So some companies, you know, they're perfectly happy with how it's been, what they do with their core businesses. They're not necessarily looking to innovate and create, you know, a, uh, a path forward in, in some other manner. So, you know, it's really, it's, it's so specific to the kind of work that they do. And how about for yourself? How do you find innovation in your life? Personally. Personally? Yeah. Like in my life? How do you push the bounds? How, what is innovation in your life? Well, I think like, you know, I think I always look for new um, opportunities. I try to, like you said, stay on top, meeting different people from different uh, fields, trying to, you know, network with different groups, not just like, you know, within um, professionally, not just within healthcare, but like, you know, trying to come to like meetings like this, for example, uh, because that's, this does give you exposure to something that um, might not be obvious um, uh, and uh, also help, allows for kind of thinking a little bit outside the box and for integration within like, um, of other, you know, other techniques and kind of be more comprehensive and collaborative, I guess. So because I think like, you know, you can, you only know what you know, but you just don't know what you don't know. So like, you know, to like find out what you don't know, you actually have to like sort of like get a little bit out of your comfort zone and, um, and explore other opportunities too. So. And Um, so a final thought uh, with regard to innovation. Just give me one what you think. Innovation, you have another word that comes right after it. What do you think? Growth. Progress. Wonderful. Amy, Maria, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for watching us here at the Innovation Network. Stay tuned for more from the Wharton DC Summit.